Hey loves. All right, let's see how we go. I'm going to share this to a few groups, Yoni Pleasure Palace. And lovely P. Okay, here we go. <sighs> hey beautiful Laura hey Jamie girls let me know if you can hear an echo as soon as Rosie jumps on let me know if you can hear an echo on my end or her end hey Mitch hey legends Let's try again. All right, here we go. Yay. Yay. Oh, that's so much better. My heart, oh, my gosh. <laughs> my heart was in my freaking throat. <laughs> okay. I, it, yeah, it just wasn't working, but we are here now. Can we just, like, shake that off? I feel like I just need to move my body. <laughs> oh babe it is this is like this is the highlight of my week hands down but also just the highlight of my career today can I just <laughs> can I say that you can oh wow that's such a such an honor and a privilege my love I am just yeah I I'm finding it hard to put into words and I knew this would happen but the depth of respect that I have for you and I think the impact that you've had on my life and I hope that translates in this conversation and that was one of the reasons I was so so excited to bring you on today and to share you and your energy and your essence mm. and your message obviously but mostly just your essence with the world and with my tribe and with the people that um, I've come to know and love as my community over here so thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, I, I love that we're here today talking about this because I think I met you at Nude Yoga a few years ago, yeah. wasn't it? And yeah. you've just, you know, grown and exp expanded so much since then. So let's just dive in. Let's do it. And it's thanks so much to you, my love. So I'd love to introduce your work to everyone watching on live. And if you're jumping on live, can you please just leave a comment and let us know where you're tuning in from and just drop us an emoji, give us a couple of eggplants, give us a couple of dancing girls, give us whatever you feel called to give us this morning. Um, when we do that, the video reaches more people and it's really important that a lot of people hear this message. So beautiful Rosie is a sex and relationship coach. And I think I, the way that I would describe you as an advocate for women's empowerment and women's empowerment, especially around their sexuality. You are a killer businesswoman and entrepreneur at heart. And I'm so familiar with your body of work, having been following you and really engaging with your content for the last probably three or four years, mm. I think. So is there anything else you'd like to add to that title? Are there any other titles that you're feeling called to step into at the moment? No, I mean, business-wise, yeah, it's all nude yoga and Yoni Pleasure Palace at the moment. There's a few other, um, I, I actually, entrepreneur, I feel like I've really stepped Beautiful. into, if I can create one successful business, I can create many. And so yes. um, there's a few projects that I'm working on behind the scenes that have nothing to do with what I'm doing <laughs> right now, like completely unrelated. And even when I launch them, I'll probably keep me anonymous like I, I it's more of a business um focus but yeah. I I think I've really learned to love conscious business and mm. 
and inspiring other women to really get into doing what they love. Um, because I did yeah. work behind a desk for, you know, three years and it mm. burnt me out and it's not sustainable long term. So mm. I would love everyone to be doing something that they love. Yeah, I think everyone should start a business at some point in their lives as well. I think mm. it's just the most beautiful learning and growth opportunity. And my coach actually said to me the other day that, you know, your shamanic journey through your business. I was like, oh, shit, that makes so much sense. <laughs> but it's just such a beautiful, powerful opportunity for growth. Um, one of the things that I'm super excited to chat to you about today is really focusing on Yoni Pleasure Palace and how that came to be and I guess that element of your business and your brand. So I'd love to hear, it's had such a profound impact on my life and for those that are watching that perhaps don't know what it is, haven't heard of it before, can you give us a little bit of the backstory? What was it that, you know, called you to birth Yoni Pleasure Palace into the world? It was, I guess, my own personal experience using a jade egg for the first time in 2014. I was in Bali and I went to this incredible workshop um, where we, we really learnt um, the traditions of, of the ancient Taoist women. Um, and, yeah, within the first, it was a four-hour workshop and we ended up putting the egg inside of us and it was just a profound moment in my life where I connected to my vagina, to my yoni, in a way that wasn't necessarily to give something to someone else or to get something from someone else. So whether mm. that's pleasure and orgasm, validation, you know, approval, um, it was just this beautiful connection that I had with myself and it was using an egg um, and I'd never put an egg inside me before. It was, it was a bit bizarre and it was really out <laughs> of my comfort zone at the time. I was like, this is really weird. <laughs> and um, anyway, I came, I kept using it and I came home back to Australia and no one knew about it. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. I, I need to spread this message and I need to spread the word, even if people think I'm crazy. Um, mm. And so, you know, on a personal level, the egg helped me be become a lot more or orgasmic than I was. Um, yeah. And I started thinking, well, I really love, I used to love vibrators and I used to really love exploring my own sexuality. So I thought, imagine if there was crystal dildos. And I think yeah. there was a company in the US at the time doing it, but other than that, no one. Um, and so again, I just sort of pioneered that um, aspect as well. And and then nude yoga came about, like all these, are, it was amazing. It was like once I tapped into my sexual energy um, and had this almost like a, a psycho-sexual spiritual awakening, Beautiful. all these incredible business ideas came to me, just like poof, out of the blue. Um, but not quite either because they'd been swimming <laughs> around the ether and, and I'd been thinking, okay, when am I going to pluck this idea and put it into motion? Um, yeah. And then, and then, yeah, I, I mean, it was a bit of an accidental business, really. Like I just kept getting asked about it and I thought, well, I'm just going to run with this because people, women are really wanting this. So that's mm. kind of where it started. So good. And what are, what are the benefits? Obviously, harnessing your creativity. So you said there were business ideas floating around and it helped you sort of bring them to life, experimenting and playing and incorporating these toys into your self-pleasure practice. But what are some of the other benefits that women can expect from using, first of all, the pleasure ones, the crystal pleasure ones, and then also the jade and the yoni eggs as well? Mm. Well, the pleasure ones are more for self-pleasure. So if you are anything like me in my early 20s, um, you kind of, I, I relied on vibrators to get me over the edge to have an orgasm. Um, they were very clitoral focused orgasms. And so the pleasure ones are, are more about slowing down your self-pleasure practice. Um, they're more, yeah, it's, it's less vigorous and it's more like mm -hmm. self-loving. I had one of my, I sent one of my best friends, a uh, rose quartz pleasure wand years ago and she as well used a lot of vibrators in her time. And she said, it was like, I was making love to myself for the first time. She's like, I didn't feel dirty afterwards. Um, mm. because she was so used to using porn and, um, vibrators. And so it is a much more slower, conscious, um, intimate experience with yourself using something like crystal because it is natural um, and it is from Mother Earth and you can program crystals to have an intention um, of what you want to manifest. So yeah. that's kind of a bit sex magic-y. Um, yeah. And then the jade eggs are more about strengthening your pelvic floor and, you know, really focusing on your pelvic health 
So, you know, if we don't engage our pelvic floor and do our Kegel exercises, chances yeah. are down the track after babies, after childbirth, it could really, um, you know, it could go south, if you know what I mean. It could, everything drops, everything becomes weaker. Um, the mm. skin isn't as, is, isn't as um, strong and toned. So using an egg is a beautiful way of yeah, keeping a really strong, healthy, toned pelvic floor, which benefits your orgasms, your lubrication, your connection to yourself. Like I wore my egg all day yesterday and today I feel really strong. Like I'm not wearing my egg at yeah. the moment, but it, it feels like I can, str- I can tighten it and I can release yeah. it and I can feel a lot more energy down there than I would if I wasn't wearing my egg. Yeah, beautiful. So obviously we're talking about self-pleasure now and we're getting into really like developing that physical intimacy and connection and relationship with yourself. I'd love to know your experience with that from the beginning, if that's okay. I think for me and a lot of women that I speak to, self-pleasure isn't something that we're taught about. It's not something that we're taught how to do. I think there's a lot of dogma and shame around it as well. And I think it can create this culture of yeah, feeling like it's something that you can't speak about. And I think whenever there's shame, then there's darkness. And there's some, for me, it was really an unhealthy manifestation that came out of that in terms of wanting to access my pleasure and wanting to experience pleasure, but not feeling like I had permission to. And exactly Mm. what you said before, feeling like it was somehow wrong or feeling like there was something that was wrong with me because I wanted to enjoy myself in this way. So what's been your experience with self-pleasure? Is it something that has always been really openly spoken about for you or something that's been really easy from the start? (laughs) Well, no, I wasn't (laughs) told anything about self-pleasure. My dear mother, as amazing as she is, no, she didn't, she didn't share anything. And I don't remember talking to anyone at school about it. I don't remember any sex education, zero. I do remember discovering my clitoris when I was 12 and I remember rubbing it and thinking this feels really good, but also really like not good at the same time. And so I left it and I also really didn't want to get caught because I felt like I was doing something bad. So Mm. I just bookmarked that and I was like, listen, I'm just not going to touch that for a while. And I literally didn't even touch um, that again, my clitoris again, until I was maybe 17, 18 years old. So that was a bit of an unknown place to go. But I actually, when I was at um, boarding school, I remember always enjoying feeling something inside me. So I would touch myself with my my own fingers and I didn't tell anyone because no one else talked about it. So I didn't think anyone else was doing it. (laughs) Um, So it was all hush, hush, very secret, very under the covers. And I, you know, I didn't even know like it, cause it felt really good, but Mm. It almost felt shameful. Guys talked about it at boarding school and I remember thinking, well, it's normal for them. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was always a very sexual person, but I didn't, um, yeah, I definitely had shame around it. And I went to a very Christian school. So it was very, Mm -hmm. um, again, just under wraps. No one spoke about it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I was out of my first relationship who I lost my virginity to and I thought I was going to marry and all that kind of stuff. And then that ended And then I remember my girlfriend took me to a sex toy shop and that's when I bought vibrators and, and really started exploring my body. Um, Mm. So I've always been very, I I, I hear a lot of women say they don't even masturbate and I'm like, wow, you know, how have you not been able to do like, that is just such a, I know there's a lot of shame and stuff wrapped up in it, but I guess I've always been so curious. Yep. Yeah, I think there's there's guilt and there's dogma and there's shame and there's layers and it creates layers to the point where women don't feel safe, I think, to to explore and connect with themselves in that way. And I think, you know, there's countless examples of women's sexuality being repressed for so many different reasons throughout history. And I think we're becoming more and more in tune with that now, which is really beautiful and part of the the rise of the divine feminine that's happening on the planet, mm. women becoming more and more in touch with that energy because it's so powerful. It's so, so powerful. And I love that, yeah, I had, a, I had a really similar experience. I think for me there was a lot of guilt around feeling like this was something that I wanted to do and I was a very sexual being from very, very early on and I didn't feel like there was space for me to show up like that in the world. Mm. And for me, as I said before, I think what I was trying to touch on was 
that because I didn't feel like I could have a healthy expression of my sexuality, I repressed it and sort of pushed it down. And so it manifested as a really unhealthy or destructive um, form of of sexuality, which turned into addiction. So Mm -hmm. I think this is what, you know, this is what we're dealing with here. We're talking about the difference between a woman showing up confidently in her own skin and owning power over her life or being, you know, a victim to her circumstances and feeling really disempowered and disconnected from herself and the world around her. Mm -hmm. Um, But how has it changed the way that you show up in the world as a woman, like in your relationships, in your business and just Mm. interacting day to day? I think that the, the more why I'm so passionate about helping women become and feel more empowered in their sexuality is because it's amazing what happens when a woman really owns and taps into her sexual power, she's whole, right? So often we are, yeah, we're tapped into our heart energy and we love and we're tapped into maybe our gut instinct or our mind. So these Mm -hmm. upper chakras are really Mm -hmm. um, developed, but then there's this Mm -hmm. base chakra, root chakra, sacral chakra that is just either cut (sighs) off. Most women are disconnected from the belly button down in, and that shows up in not touching themselves, not being able to communicate to their partner what they like in bed, being inorgasmic, feeling pain, sexual mm-hmm. pain, numbness, you know, um, even to the extent of dis-ease or um, mm. cysts and, you know, having fibroids or endometriosis. All of this stuff is, I believe, and Louise Hayes would believe, you know, a, a, a radical disconnect to our sexuality as a woman. You know, men have been kind of like encouraged in a way over thousands of years to be connected to that part. You know, that's all, it's very external and they see it, they feel it, they touch it, they compare it. It's all very external. Whereas a woman, it's inside us, right? Our genitals, but also mm-hmm. our reproductive system. And, um, you know, and so it's a bit more, women don't talk about it. It's not so much there in your face. So mm. it is really important for women to plug into that part of their body. Um, and for me, that's kind of once I integrated that part, that sexuality part, and it, uh, very similar to you, I was very unhealthy sexual. Um, I mm. tapped into my slut uh, archetype well and truly in my early 20s. Mm. Um, and so that's kind of the unhealthy version of it. I very much so yeah. feel like I'm in my healthy sexual feminine now. Um, yeah. I'm in a very committed relationship and I don't feel the need to seek validation from other people like I used to. And I definitely mm. had that addictive personality when it came to sex. Um, but whether it's healthy or unhealthy, like, I think it's still good to be tapped into that place because so many women aren't. And when we do, then we're whole, we've got our whole body, you know, in it, in, in this experience. Yeah. It's beautiful. So good. So good. You touched on a little bit before about becoming orgasmic and really experiencing new realms of pleasure and that's been my journey over the last probably three to six months so it's still very new for me but really expanding what I'm capable of experiencing like going to the depths of pain but also just expanding my capacity for joy and pleasure Mm -hmm. and one of the things that I'm working on at the moment and it's funny I can't believe I'm going to talk about this online but it's obviously (laughs) going to serve someone and me most of all but um (laughs) experiencing full body orgasms and I think it's the difference between for me it's for me sex was always really goal orientated and so was my self-pleasure practice and I realized you know for me sex is such a beautiful reflection of what's going on in the rest of my life as well Mm. and I found that when I was more goal orientated in my life I was also more goal orientated in the bedroom or the two were sort of interlinked and making the transition from yeah goal orientated sexual experiences to really enjoying the process, surrendering to the process and allowing yourself to experience like fully surrendered embodied pleasure that often leads to, not always, but often leads to those full body toe curling, transcendental experiences and orgasms in that state. I would love to know how do we transition? Like what's been your experience helping women transition from goal orientated sexual experiences to a more embodied feminine pleasure? Well, definitely the body. So like, with clitoral orgasms it kind of comes from a space of contraction tightness everything kind of going in right it's like 
you're kind of holding it it's and it's and it's this explosion and then if you think about a full body orgasm and if you haven't had one don't worry you will um yeah. or like a cervical orgasm or g spot it's more of an expansive opening broadening you know rather than a going inwards it's an implosive kind of it goes through your entire body and the way to experience that is well for, like I said going into the body for starters not holding your breath so continuously yeah. breathing throughout love making or throughout foreplay um, it's moving your body so rather than saying staying stiff and rigid when you're receiving pleasure for yourself or with another See if you can ripple your spine and move your body forward and back and undulate and round and find just find your primal feline, <laughs> you know, serpent, even your kundalini mm. energy in your body and just explore that and see if you can move it. Um, and then the last thing is sound, making sounds. Even if you fake it till you make it a little bit, you know, making some moaning sounds. I mean, my partner said to me the other day, she's like, sometimes you, you roar like a lion and other times you're just <laughs> so, it's like this really sweet, high-pitched. And it just depends on which, where I'm, my chakra is kind of feeling the most expanded. So if it is hot, yeah. I am a bit higher. If I am feeling really grounded and earthy and deep down in my body, it will be more primal and, and kind of those lower um, growling sounds so yeah breath sound movement is your way to unlock full body orgasms and 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 the biggest son i had someone message me the other day she's like i wore my yoni egg and i self-pleasured with it in and all of a sudden my whole body's vibrating and like shaking and like you know fully yeah. doing this and she's like is something wrong with me and i said no my <laughs> love that's called a full body orgasm if you're you know vibe your whole body's vibrating yeah. and shaking um, work with it, breathe with it mm. and, and ride that wave. Try not to squish it down. You know, I go, yeah. I, can, I convulse. I, I, I just, and yeah. it's important that you're with someone that you feel comfortable enough to do this with because so many women will not squirt or not shake or not make silly, crazy animal sounds because they're embarrassed. And yeah. it's like, well, if you're embarrassed, you're not with the right person. Or mm. you may need a session with someone like myself or a tantra teacher, someone <sighs> local in your neighbourhood who can really get you to feel not embarrassed by your sound, your body, your movement, the way you smell, the way you, you know, taste, everything, like getting you really, really comfortable with that essence of yourself. Mm, beautiful. And I can see guys tagging their girlfriends in this already and <laughs> people jumping on now. So guys, when you're watching, just leave us a comment below and yeah, tag the people that you know will benefit from this conversation and share it around. Um, one of the things that you mentioned, and I think, yeah, the idea of convulsing, because that's when energy moves through the body. Like that's when we can actually clear some stagnant blocks, some stuff mm. that's been holding us back energetically. That's when we start to move it all around, when we are like actually yeah, moving in the body in that beautiful way. And obviously breath, sound and movement being the three core elements of Tantra for those that are new to this whole realm and whole experience. I was mind blown to know that. Mm. But one of the things you spoke about um, just before that I want to touch on is this idea of letting out those primal and raw and really like wild sounds and screams. And this was something that I experienced for the very first time in your workshop. So <laughs> when I went to nude yoga for the very first time, I've been to two of your workshops now, and nude yoga in Sydney, it was the very first time, my love, I swear to God, that I've ever, ever heard a woman make a raw, primal, like deep, guttural sound. Like what I'd seen, it was nothing like what I'd seen in the world. It was nothing like what I'd seen on movies or even in culture, like anywhere. Nothing that I'd seen in my relationships or with family and nothing that I'd ever felt given myself permission to do. And it was the most liberating experience. I remember something inside me just unlocked. And it was that ultimate permission slip for me to just let rip that part of me that wanted to roar the bloody house down. And I did. I wanted to scream the house down. And there is so much power. And like you said, I think women feel more comfortable in these higher chakras and I can 100% like I'm the same. But there's something so liberating about accessing that, that voice and giving voice to those feelings and those emotions that 
are often like welling deep down inside our womb and our yoni space as well. So thank you for that experience. But also Mm. what is it, what's the importance to you of accessing that? Let's just go with the inner wild woman and accessing that part of ourselves, that really primal archetype. Where's the power in that and why is it important, do you think? Oh, because we are told from such a young age to be a good little girl Mm. and to not, you know, I remember my mum basically saying to me, I was having a tantrum about something and I remember her just, I remember her shaking me. I must have been having a big tantrum and she said, you can't act like this. You need to be quiet. You can't, you just can't do that. And I, I was a very, you know, sensible mature young girl but that basically stifled my voice and I Mm. remember being a good little girl after that and it just really that even if I felt something um I didn't want to make life harder than it already was for my mum and life was really really fucking hard at that time um and so we're kind of and even if you haven't had an upbringing like that just in our world like we, we as adults we can't have tantrums we can't express how we really feel in public really um, yes, behind closed doors we can, but it's, it's very liberating to be able to stomp your feet, express your emotion, mm. have a tantrum um, in a conscious way. And your wild woman mm. is that untamed, undomesticated woman because we have, we've all been put in this cage in a way. And, I mean, I, I'm not really in my wild woman uh, archetype at the moment. I'm very much so in this, like, mother um (laughs) it's like nowhere near as exciting as it was um but it's having it's a whole other world of challenges and and benefits and stuff but when I was in my wild woman boy did I unleash and probably around that time that I met you and you had you at my workshop it just all the times that I didn't express myself both in my family life and in with men at school being bullied whatever it's like it all came out and mm. I never felt so good in my life. Scream- and I remember mm. this one experience. I was in Bali at a Tantra training retreat um, and I was having some issues at the time with a family member and I, I went into the middle of the circle and I put him on a pillow and I was on the other pillow and my Tantra yeah. teacher was guiding me through this. And, you know, initially I was really sad and I was crying. And then she's like, no, nah, I want you to tap into your wild woman. I want you to unleash basically. And yeah. I just remember roaring, like just screaming and howling. And f- I was so fucking angry. And I, I actually, I was so uncomfortable with the way I sounded. But I just kept going and I kept going. And I had all the women, there was about 30 or 40 people in the room had all the women howling with me and crying Mm. and screaming because of all their father issues that they were having at the time as well coming up. And I just remember crumbling on the floor and it was like the first time I'd just unleashed. I never wanted to unleash that on him. You know, it was, I just needed to process that emotion in my own body in a safe space. And all those other women did too. And it gave them an opportunity to, Um, But I just remember that feeling of screaming. And then I was able to sort of transfer that into my sex life and get comfortable with the way I sounded as a wild, crazy wild woman screaming angry during sex. And it was like a whole other level. (laughs) Because there is, were you going to say anything else there? No, yeah. Um, No, yeah. I think there is so much to be angry about and there is so much beauty and so much validity in our anger in a woman's anger and a man's but a woman's anger especially is what we're speaking about at the moment and I think as women it's really it's almost like we don't feel permission to access and to express that anger exactly what you said we're told to be to be good little girls and this is the kind of anger and I heard you speak about um, I was listening to you on a podcast with Connie Chapman recently and you talked about Vanessa Florence, I think, mm-hmm. and her Wild Woman video, which I um, found later on and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But one of the things she, she was speaking about is this idea that that's the energy that women have been persecuted for for centuries. Like that's mm-hmm. the energy that we've been burned at the stake for. That's the energy that we've been um, put in insane asylums and locked away in psych wards for like all of these years. Burnt at the like, stake. Yeah. 
a hundred percent. And I've had visions in, um, in sessions with my coach and different like somatic experiences um, of, yeah, just different past life experiences mm. where that's, yeah, that's happened to my soul and, and really feeling into the pain of that in this life and processing maybe what wasn't processed. Um, yeah. In a, in a life before. And I think we do this work on behalf of all women and we do yeah. this work on behalf of our ancestors and the women that have gone before us, but also we do this work on behalf of our soul through all her, her lifetimes and her expressions as well. Mm, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's powerful. How do we, what, if there's someone that's listening to this going, how the hell do I even begin <laughs> to tap into that energy and to, like express this, this tension, this anger, this aggression or whatever it is that I'm feeling deep in my, my womb and in my uni. So find a space that you're comfortable. So like, for example, I would sit in the middle of my lounge room. I would put on, I would make sure no one's home for starters. So you need to feel safe yeah. somewhere you feel safe yeah. and you can unleash um, without hurting yourself or anyone else. Um, yeah. And then I would probably, I, I don't need music now, but if I was a beginner and I had this yeah. first time doing this, I'd probably I put, use music all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would put on a, a song that really is just going to fire you up, whether that's something like yeah. Prodigy or like just something <laughs> that just is going to really get you going. And then I would just kneel. So always um, be on your knees rather than on your butt. Um, and open the knees out wide. So you're sitting on your heels, your knees are open. And that means, you know, your whole body is like, it's nothing's kind of caving. You're, you're upright and you're, the chakras are all aligned. And then I would just start to tap your body, just start to feel like, just see what's going on and like tapping around, you know, like it might be here and, be, and you might want to bring your head back and just start like, oh, like start making sounds that you're uncomfortable yeah. with. Um, and it might be really s soft initially because everyone's uncomfortable with their voice, really, um, if they haven't done this work before. <laughs> and then see if you can move. So, okay, what's, what's going on here? And make the sound from your throat. Maybe it's your heart and maybe you start wailing. Maybe you bring your fingers and you start tapping down on your yoni or your womb and then you feel some real deep stuff and then just make that sound. And you might just cry. Put a pillow in front of you as well. And... Maybe there's someone that you need to talk to, like I said, you know, in that experience in Bali and you actually just face them and tell them exactly what you think and start like hitting the, hitting the pillow. Just like really um, let, let yourself go because we, we are so contained and, and domesticated. What would your wild animal be? And think about what, what animal, if you could just unleash that animal, how would she prowl around the lounge room if, and how would she roll on her back? Would she scream? Would she cry? You know, just really going into the body again. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So good. It's so funny. So much of that. Um, it feels so natural. I think for me, it was just following my intuition. Like if no one was around right now, if I was just letting all expectations go and letting my ego go of what I looked like, what would I feel called to do? What would feel really good for me to do right now? And it's scary and uncomfortable, but it feels good and it's a beautiful release. Mm. Um, yeah, that's amazing. And that transitions really well. One of the things that I also wanted to talk to you about this morning was this idea of identity and embodying the different, um, yeah, embodying the different archetypes, but also embodying the different parts of ourselves and allowing them to come through in our work and in the world. And I will never forget one of the things that you said to me that I, uh, I've never, ever forgotten it. And I wrote it on a post-it note and I stuck it above my computer and I looked at it every single day. And it was the line simply that all of me is welcome here. Mm. And it was just the ultimate, the ultimate release, the ultimate acceptance, the ultimate permission slip for me to show up as all of the parts of me and it hel it's helped with my ability to shop consistently online because I'm not freaking out about, wait a second, I'm allowed to show that part, but I can't show that part. Or I feel like this today. I can't show up because I feel like that. I have to wait till I feel good or I feel like um, my, I call it now, like my love and light. And it's like I can only show up when I'm in my love and light. And it's like all of, all of us is welcome here and all of mm. us is needed here. And for me, my ultimate like life goal at the moment is to show up as who I really am. And that includes all of me. But that's something that I think you've taught me and I've seen you embody and be an example of for so many years. So 
what does that look like for you showing up as bringing all of who you are? Because I know you've got faith, like you have an incredible faith in God. I know that you, yeah, you have this beautiful sexually empowered raw side to you. Now you said you're embodying the mother archetype, Like there's so many facets to the diamond of our existence. How do you make space for all of them and show up as, as all of them in the world? Yeah, I question. <laughs> I know. And I really appreciate you reminding me of that. You know, all parts of me are welcome here. Like just whichever way you say it, it's it's just the word welcome. It's like you are you're welcome like any part of you whether it's icky, whether it's ugly. And this is what I love um really sharing in nude yoga is really embracing you don't need to look pretty and like have it all together all the time. It's like you it's okay to look do an ugly cry and just and I show that on my social media. Um, I'm, it, I feel like that is a platform. It used to be, I used to just only show the good days and then I was having a lot of bad days and I thought, well, I've got to jump on and, and share that. And so I do. <laughs> That's it. I, ha- I have to, otherwise the people think your life's perfect. And, you know, even today, like I'm in, um, you know, autumn phase of my cycle big time. And, um, it's, it's, I actually said to my partner yesterday, I'm like, can I just retire now? Like, I, just, I don't want to do anything. And it's like, and I'm just embracing that this part of my cycle is the part where I don't want to do anything. And there is this little, you know, childish brat inside me who just wants to stomp her feet and go, I don't want to go to school, you know, um, because I wasn't allowed to do that when I was a little girl. <laughs> so I had to go to school. Um, and so it's just like allowing yourself and that's, the cycle is a beautiful way to explain this because as a woman, we go through summer, autumn, winter, spring, every freaking month. And yeah. you have to show up in your life to your relationships, to your work, to the people on your social media, whoever, um, in, in all those phases. So, yeah. and, and you just got to show up anyway. And, but sometimes like, for example, last week, I had just come off the tail end of a four day expo. I was exhausted and I really needed to honor. I needed sleep and I needed, you know, that was different, but you know, being able to do what I do and show up anyway, it's like that show up anyway, put that as a posted up on your, on your mirror guys show up anyway, because, and sometimes like yesterday, you know, I did something I didn't really want to do, but I showed up anyway and I loved it. And it's like, you sometimes you just got to do a couple of minutes of that thing that you don't really want to do and then you're into it and you're loving it and you're doing it. It's like going to the gym. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like not every day is going to, you're going to be that love and light. And I only used to like my love and light <laughs> side of myself because that's what I thought everyone else liked. And mm. then when I started crying and showing my anger and all this kind of stuff, People were like, oh, I can relate to you a bit easier now. Because mm-hmm. like, just like Brené Brown says in her body of work, people don't trust perfect. People actually relate to and trust imperfect, imperfection because they believe they're imperfect. And so they want to see that somebody else, you know, someone I was following for a few, number of years, and I would kind of watch her from afar and go, does she have any? cracks does she have any ickiness show me your grit show me your bad day show me your bloody bad hair day please just show me some dirt and I never got any and so when I unfollowed her I felt better because it's like I need to see if I'm gonna and I'm very conscious of who I follow on social media um Mm -hmm. if I don't see a bit of both I I kind of there's this imbalanced view and I like a bit of grit in someone I like (laughs) to see their imperfections show me your scars you know yeah so good so good and have you found how do you has the world tried to put you in a box and how do you continually break out of it as a woman as a coach as a leader you know for me it's I've been through a massive identity crisis lately of stripping back all of these bullshit ego identities of if I wasn't this, what would I be? If I wasn't a coach, what would I be? If I wasn't, and I just, yeah, exactly what you said, I just got so sick of trying to be, show up as, you know, one side of myself all the time. But yeah, how do you continually break out of the box that the world tries to put you in? <laughs> well, I broke out of a big box 
um, last <laughs> year. <laughs> um, I've always been in heterosexual relationships. And then last year I'm like, oh, I'm, by the way, everyone, I'm with a woman now. And everyone was like, what? Um, but I think because I'd been breaking out of so many boxes over the past five years, no one was that surprised, um, particularly around my family. I mean, they were, they were like, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, you've always been with men. Are you are you gay now? Are you coming out? And it's like, well, it's actually not about coming out and being gay and, and that kind of thing. Like, it's just that I'm in love with a woman. I, I'm in love with someone who's not a man. You know, there's, why do I have to come out? Why does it have to be, oh, I'm in this box now, by the way. Mm. No, I'm just, this is just who I, I'm showing up as today. You know, everything's very fluid. Um, so mm, I feel like I'm, I'm always jumping out of boxes and going into new boxes. So it's, yeah, I think if you become too um, focused on that, I'm in this identity box, you might miss out. Like if mm-hmm. I had been too, oh, no, I'm, a het- I'm not gay, I'm not a, I'm heterosexual, I only like men. If I had just thought that, I wouldn't have even been open to being with my, my girlfriend, Ash, because I would have just put, a, you know, put myself in a box, in a cage. So it's, it's, I love being able to go, well, yeah, what? if I could do this, what would I do? And yeah, yeah, it's a really, I think, and a lot of women, because I created a, a Facebook group, private one called Girl Meet Girl. I'm in there. Yay. <laughs> and there's just so many women who are like, well, since, particularly since seeing me yeah. make the transition, they're like, oh, Rose is pretty open about that. Um, maybe could I be with a woman? Like it's just giving, again, giving people permission slips by just, you being you and you do you and they'll, they'll be inspired by that. And um, mm. a lot of women are going, actually, I mean, am I just meant to be in a heterosexual relationship or, you know, looking outside of yourself and your conditioning? It's so mm. cool when you start to just take yeah. the veil off and see what's behind it. Yeah, beautiful. How has it transformed your life to take the veil off? And to really to step outside the box. And why do you think it's important for so many women or for women especially to take the veil off and to, yeah, to break out of the box, question their identity? Yeah, well, I think it's important because then you become your authentic self. And when you're authentic, that's you're going to, people will feel you and your message more like when you're being real you're going to have more of an impact you're going to be on path you know that feeling when you're not on path and you're Mm -hmm. kind of all over the place and you're not living your full potential it's a crappy feeling but when you start to really own who you are and my girlfriend's the same she was with a man before me and you can feel even with her energy she feels more in alignment with her energy because she stepped Mm -hmm. into who she really is and there's a power in that. There's a power in authenticity, in just being who you are. So I think, you know, and, the, and lots can come from that, new, new business ideas and new, yeah. new paths uh, are forged. Yeah. What questions do you have or do you use any particular questions to uh, really prompt someone to start deconstructing those ideals? If there was a question that you ask yourself in your journal or just like a prompt that we can use? Um, I, a lot of women say, like I'll ask them something. So, for example, I'll be sitting here having a coaching session with a woman and I'll ask her something and she says, I don't know. And then I'll say, but if you did know, what would it be? Yeah. And then they then it opens their mind. And I can thank my ex-boyfriend for that because he, I would always <laughs> say, I don't know. And he'd be like, yeah, Yeah. but if you did know, what would it be? And I was like, and every time I opened up and something came through that was just profound. I'm like, wait, I know what you're doing now. So it's like, whatever you're confused about, whatever it is that you ask your angel cards or your pendulum, or if you just, or even asking other people, okay, sure. You don't know. But if you did, what would it be? Mm. And then Beautiful. your intuition gets like pricks her little ears up and she's like, oh, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So good. Mm. So good. Um, just quickly, faith and faith in sexuality and faith in spirituality and 
yeah, faith in the embodiment of the divine feminine and all of these things. I think part of my healthy expression in the world is showing up as both. I had coffee with a girlfriend the other day and she's like, she was a new connection that I hadn't met before. And she was like, I wanted to meet the woman that posts about church on Sunday and then posts about yoni eggs on Monday morning. (laughs) And for me, it's just like, it's the ultimate paradox, but it's also not. It, It also makes so much perfect sense for me to not only have the two parts of my life coexisting, but actually connect them and actually intermingle them. And, um, yeah, I'd love to know your experience with that. Yeah, well, it goes, it goes back a long way. But, I mean, I think Marianne Williamson talks about, you know, what is the one word that women scream out when they're in the middle of sex or an <laughs> orgasm? God, you know, God, God yes. <laughs> so, yes, Lord. Yeah, it's um, it's that higher power, and it's all it's all one, really. Like, um, I grew up in a very Christian upbringing, and God, my faith was pivotal in me getting through a lot of stuff because I didn't have counselors, and I didn't have, you know, at the time, my mum, I had to go into boarding school for for personal reasons, and. I really relied on my faith and God to get me through a lot of shit. So I've always feel like I've got that connection there with God. And when it's waned and when it's kind of, I've not felt it there, that's when my life kind of crumbles a little bit. So I think having a connection to God, to higher power, to universe, or angels, whoever, you know, your guides is so important to being human. Um, and you can use that that spiritual energy during sex. Sex is sacred. Unfortunately, though, a lot of us don't use sex as a sacred act, you know, and I didn't for many years because I I was searching for love through sex. And the reality is love is just always within us. It's always there. We don't need to find it. It's just there. Or find, you know, find it within ourselves. It's like the alchemist, you know, he went, he went all the way around. I don't know if you've read that book, but He went searching for the gold, right? And he searched high and low, went all across the world. And the gold was actually the whole time right under his feet where he started. And it's like that it's always in there. Um, And I think it's being able to combine God with sex, um, being, uh, and I remember my tantra teacher used to say something quite, um, oh, it's, it's just a bit shocking to some people's ears, but being fucked open to God. That's yeah. how she described tantric sex was being fucked open to God. And that's basically when, like, when I orgasm, I'm not thinking anything. I'm completely present. I'm at one with the universe. And orgasm is like a, a hint of what it's like to be meditating, basically, and that, that enlightenment feeling. So mm. God is within you. It is your, it's part of your sexuality. It's part of all of being a woman or a man and I think we separate it so much and that's where pain comes in is when we separate yeah 100% and I want to touch on really quickly something you said before about seeking validation outside yourself and that was really the foundation for all of my earliest sexual experiences was seeking validation and I didn't there was a sense of like rather than being in my body during sex, it was this feeling of like tapping out. And it makes me like even uncomfortable to think about Mm. it now because it was just this ultimate disconnection. And I was coming into sex from a very egoic place of wanting to get something from the other person rather than wanting to connect or share or even give. It was very much a place of um, seeking, yeah, seeking self-worth and validation through these sexual experiences and knowing that, you know, if you sleep with me, if you fuck me, then I'm worthy. And that means mm. that I'm, you know, worthy of spending time with, I'm worthy of being around, I'm worthy of being seen. And it's really, yeah, it was this process of placing or looking outside myself for exactly what you said, what has been within me mm-hmm. all along. Um, and one of the things that that caused, I think this is a beautiful way to wrap up. Um, one of the things that that really created like this, un- these unconscious sexual experiences was a lot of trauma in in my womb space in and around my yoni in and around um you know all different parts of my body and energetic blockages for those of us that are still you know new to this space and new to this language and new to this whole world Mm. can you sort of give us an idea of how energy gets trapped in the body how it gets stuck how traumatic experiences or situations can create these blockages what they do and then what the fuck do we do with them how do we release them and let them go (laughs) i remember a girl in new yoga shared that um when she was having sex with her partner or a lover, she would leave her body 
like literally yeah. just leave her body. And yeah. then I, I was really shocked to look around the circle and I said, who else has experienced this? And so many women put up their hand. And, you know, for me, I'm a very grounded, I'm my root and sacral chakra. That's where I'm at. You know, like this morning I woke up <laughs> this morning yeah. I woke up and I, it was so, it was such a conscious effort for me to sit up in bed before going out and making my coffee and doing my thing to just sit and breathe. And I was doing like four counts in, holding for four, exhale for eight, and like can, trying to connect to the higher chakras. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Like I, I, again, you know, but I'm, I'm like I'm, straight out. <laughs> oh no, I'm the opposite. Yeah. I'm in my body and I'm so here on planet Earth. And um, anyway, so I, I couldn't relate. Um, to that but as we started talking it was like okay she'd experienced trauma from a, a young age and this other woman had as well and whether it's soft trauma or hard trauma and there is a, 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 dif- a distinction you know soft trauma might be you know I've definitely had soft trauma traumatic experiences sexually where I've had too much to drink and the sex has been in some way consensual but in other ways completely not um, I was just doing it so I didn't you know I, I aggra- aggravate him um, and then there's hard trauma, which is like full on sexual, um, rape or violence, um, or even getting an STD. That's another form of, um, soft trauma or hard trauma for some women, abortions, all of this kind of stuff. And what, what these, these things can do is be stored in our body. Um, our body is a barometer and it will tell you. And so if you're having symptoms or, or side effects or something going on, particularly down in your yoni or your womb, um, but anyway, really, in your body, it's a sign that there's some stuck energy. And energy or emotion is just energy in motion. And so we, if we want to remove or not remove but release this stuck energy, we need to express emotion. We need to release the emotion from that part of our body and, and move through that because otherwise you're just going to keep switching off during sex. Um, and if you are someone who switches off or moves out of their body during intercourse stop having sex stop complete like start to really honor your body and 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 just don't have sex and and go and get the help that you need because it's about awareness first so if it is happening and you know when it's happening when you don't feel much or you're not really there you know you're just not in the room um if that's happening that's your fight or flight or freeze response probably up there at freeze, I would say, which is the right at the top. Um, and that's your, that's that coping mechanism that you've created from that traumatic experience. And you can heal that. That is the good news. You can heal that and you can heal that through seeing a therapist, a counsellor, ideally someone who's, who incorporates not just the scientific psycho- mm. psychological side, but the spiritual embodiment side as well yeah and and, yeah because you don't want to just go straight to the head and get on medication okay that is not a pill is not going to fix those issues it's just going to mask it and it'll come out in other ways and this is why the yoni egg is so beautiful because it's a physical tool that you can use that you can program and that you're going straight to the source Hmm. You have to touch your yoni and feel it and see it and engage with it to put the egg inside. And you might not even use your egg for the first month of receiving it. You might just want to put it in your knickers, inside the knickers or inside your bra or sleep with it if you have had sexual trauma. Or um, one woman who was raped and came to get a yoni egg from me, she rested it at the entrance of her. And I told her, do not just put it inside you, wait. And she did. She put it at the entrance of her yoni and within a half an hour the, she'd taken the egg in. Yeah. So yeah. don't just shove it in sort of thing. It's, it can yeah. be a really beautiful healing experience Amazing. that you can and facilitate, you know. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. And anything around de-armoring, just really quickly, this was like a mind-blowing word for me and practice for me. So I'd, I'd love if that's okay, if you could just share a little bit about that. Yeah, de-armoring. I mean, I've got my little um, bag of tricks here. This is one of my favourite ones um, for de-armoring. It's just here in my little desk. And um, it's really long. So that's like 25 centimetres long. And it's, this ends really great for reaching your cervix. And so you, you're inserting that in and you can press this end 
at the end of your cervix and just massage it for about three to five minutes. And you might want to move to another space and just press there and massage. It's essentially like an internal massage for your vagina, just like you get a yeah. sore neck, just like you get that tightness in between your shoulder blades or somewhere else on your body. Our vagina holds tension as well. And, mm. and, and it can be from negative experiences, sexual experiences, or just putting tampons in or anything, you know, even a marine or an IUD for some women has been very traumatic. And so massaging inside with something that's, you know, body safe, borosilic glass is just the best thing you can use. Um, and it's, yeah, like a massage or going and getting a yoni mapping or a yoni massage session, Jay, is, yeah. is really incredibly healing. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I've done that. Um, yeah. Once before. And it was, yeah, it was incredible. And the whole process, I think for me, it really does feel like, because it's not that we're just disconnecting during sex, it's that we're disconnecting during life. Like mm. we're disconnecting as we're walking around in the world. And I think for me, the experience, I had never had the experience for as long as I could remember anyway, the experience of actually being fully in my body in the world and walking around as an embodied human. I was so up here. I was so in my head. I was processing everything through this intellectual worldview or intellectual, um, yeah, my mind. And it's just been a whole new experience for me to drop into, into this embodied. And the way that I've shown up, I feel lighter. I feel like I can speak my truth without wanting to run for the hills. I can ask for what I want. I can claim what's mine and I just I feel free like I Mm. feel absolutely free and liberated to show up as who I really am in the world more so and it's an ongoing journey but more so than I ever have before um so thank you for your part in that (laughs) but also just for facilitating this transformation and this transition for women all over the world it's just been um yeah it's life-changing it's absolutely life-changing um is there anything that you would love to share how can we get in touch with you how can we buy from you how can we work with you and what are you super excited what are you offering to the world at the moment that you'd love to share well definitely jump on my insta i post my stories and shows my real life and has helped a lot of women through their sexual blocks um so yoni pleasure palace and rosie reese so jump on over and follow us there um my next offerings is yoni egg parties so they're coming out very soon and they're essentially for anyone but particularly my affiliates um who want to just have i guess a physical give women in their community a physical experience of the products and it's kind of like you know tupperware parties or those those (laughs) dildo parties it's like just with yoni eggs and and pleasure ones. So it's, it's more Beautiful. of a conscious party. So I'm, I'm rolling that out very soon and it'll be happening in the next, you know, one to two months, hopefully. So um, yeah. if you're interested and excited about that, just send me a message. Um, but I think you would hold an epic Yoni pleasure <laughs> party. So, yeah. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. I'm super excited about that. I'm going to put all of the links to your social media, your website, and also my affiliate link for the Yoni Pleasure Palace where you can get your jade egg, um, your rose quartz egg. I've got the um, amethyst egg, the crystal egg, and then the rose quartz pleasure ones. And the next one I'm moving up to, I think, is the obsidian. But um, there's so many beautiful ones to choose from. Let your intuition guide you in terms of what um, what you pick, but I'll put all those links below. Um, Rosie, I just, from the bottom of my heart and also just from like my womb and everywhere, <laughs> all of me, I'm just so freaking, just Aww. thank you. Thank you so much for who you are, for showing up in the world and for igniting sparks in all of us everywhere you go. Um, it's been such an honour to chat to you today. Is there anything else you wanted to share or I just want to say thank you for your energy for your vibrancy and for you know I can't reach everyone with this work and so people like yourself and the rest of my affiliates are out there sharing this important message with women so Mm. thank you for vibing with me and my work and then sharing that with with your world because that's just Mm. this is how more and more women will become sexually empowered and once they are sexually empowered that's going to filter into their relationships their work life just walking down the street they'll feel more confident (laughs) like in every way possible so it's not just sexual empowerment it's like in every form um empowerment in in their body in particular so thank you jay oh you're so welcome you're so welcome and it's 
it's work like this. Yeah, this is what this is what changes the world. Um, yeah. Everyone that's watching, I would love to put. I would love everyone to put something below that they've taken away from this video. What is the one thing that you are so excited to go and implement now? What's the one thing that you didn't know that you now know? And what's the one thing that you're feeling really cool to share in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. Um, I'll be here and Rosie, I'll tag you. And if there's any comments, I would yeah. love, I don't know if you can come back and just put your two cents in, but we're here. We would love to start a conversation and um, our inboxes are both always open. I'll put the link to the Uni Pleasure Palace group as well below. Mm. And um, yeah, let's freaking do this. Thanks Amazing. Thank you, beautiful. <laughs> Have Bye, the best everyone. Day Bye. Bye, guys.